Now it's time to hear the stories of Utes in their own words. This is Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. Here's your host, Mike Legeschult. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the premiere edition of Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. I'm Mike Legeschult. Thanks for joining us. We hope you're all doing well as we continue to cope with the coronavirus pandemic. And, and uh, we're hoping to help you through this is a little bit with this podcast we've created and, and open to, to give you a little bit of a diversion. You know, it's it's been extremely challenging and stressful situation for so many of us. And, uh, you know, when you're dealing with lives and your lives on a daily basis, diversions help you get through those things. And, and I think as you talk to people, one thing that's compounded uh, this situation for so many is those diversions have been taken away. I mean, live music, concerts, live theater, uh, just simply going to a movie uh, with a bucket of popcorn, live sports, you you can't watch any of those things anymore. You can't partake in those things anymore. So, What's happened is at a time when we need diversions more than ever, they're not there. So uh, what you're seeing uh, in in all various aspects of the media and entertainment, everyone's looking for ways to still connect with people. And in sports, you're seeing media outlets and teams uh, put out some programming and and, uh, some podcasts and highlight reels and various things to sort of help and stay connected with them uh, during the shutdown. So uh, myself and some other folks at the U were sitting down, uh, or actually we weren't sitting down, we were in our home sitting down and we were talking over Zoom about some ways to uh, help our fans stay engaged with us. And I'm someone who's been at the U since the mid nineties. And I started thinking back to all the teams and all the people I've covered and met and, and uh, friends of friends and people who are currently in the department. And I thought, you know what, we have so many wonderful stories uh, from from recent history, from over the years to share, maybe this is a time we could do this. So I, I pitched the idea of a long format podcast where it's a lot of it's a lot of people telling stories, and and we decided to get this running. So that's what this is going to be. This isn't going to be uh, a place to find breaking news or high end analysis or opinions. There's plenty of places to get that that to do a great job. This is really going to be a podcast about storytelling and, and we hope you'll enjoy this with us over the coming weeks. So the plan is to do this once a week, the next 10 to 12, 15 weeks. We'll see when we get things rolling again this fall with football and, and, and soccer and volleyball and cross country and the other fall sports. And, and we'll see how the schedule shapes up. But, you know, until then we plan to come to you once a week with the podcast of some kind and, and we're going to get some people on here that are household names. It might be a former All-American who played a long time in the pros. Uh, that might be one show. The next week, we might have on someone who is a sophomore on the women's soccer team or junior on the baseball team that you maybe haven't heard of, but they have a story to tell. Or maybe it's the roundtable of current athletes talking about how they're dealing with the coronavirus pandemic and, and staying on top of their academics and so forth. So it's a wide ranging show, but the basis is going to be storytelling and, and we hope you'll enjoy it. And as we move on throughout the, the coming weeks, we'll reach out to you, the fans and say, Hey, who do you want to hear from? And we'll make some efforts to get the guests lined up that you uh, want to hear from on this podcast. Well, that brings us to our, our first guest. And, uh, you know, during the, the shutdown period in late March, early April, we kind of got cheated out of one of the best, uh, you know, three, four, five weeks of the year, which is conference tournaments and March Madness. And and it's amazing how quickly things change. We had fans in the stands, teams on the floor at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas on a Wednesday. By Thursday morning, everything was shut down. They were pulling teams off the floor at the ACC tournament as they were ready to play. Uh, one tournament had a game stopped at halftime, and, and that's just how quickly within – Less than 24 hours, things changed. And as a result, March Madness was lost. The Final Four was lost. And so I thought for this first podcast, you know what, since we lost out on on March Madness, a good place to start would be looking back at Utah's 1998 Final Four run. Uh, That was uh, just a tremendous season uh, for the running Utes. They, They were as high as number two in the polls that year. 30 wins. They took down the defending champion Arizona in the Elite Eight. They beat number one ranked North Carolina in the in the semis and San Antonio lost to, to Kentucky in the championship game. But but that run in that group of guys was pretty special. And Donnie Daniels, how about this career for Donnie? In 30 years, he's been the five Final Fours. He was a, a longtime assistant with Rick Majerus. He's now come back as our director of player development. But Donnie was an assistant under Big Rick that year. And, and we thought we'd have Donnie Daniels on to talk about that Final Four run as our first guest and look back at that great group. So that's our show for today. Donnie Daniels coming up in just a moment. 
Back with more. This is Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. To hear more episodes of this show and other Utah Athletics podcasts, search for them on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. Now back to more of Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. And welcome back to Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. Mike Lagas show uh, here with our premier edition. And what better of a first guest could we get than Donnie Daniels, longtime college basketball assistant coach who's now back at the U of Z, director of player development. Donnie, how you doing? Good, Mike. You know, pleasure being with you guys and stuff like that. It'll be fun. We'll get into uh, the, the main topic today, which is the 98 Final Four run in just a moment. But first off, how are you uh, doing and dealing with the uh, coronavirus and the work from home situation? Uh, you know, this is a good uh, this is a good stepping stone to retirement. And so, <laughs> it's like I'm 65. So I've been, last three weeks I've been here, you know, went out very minimal groceries or whatever, came back. So I've been in here. You know what? I can do the retirement thing. I can, can do, do it nothing. now. Yeah, I can do. Yeah, I've, I've learned I can do nothing. Yeah, this is a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of retirement now, Donnie, you and I have known each other since the mid-90s when I was at the right. U and you were coaching with uh, Rick Majerus. And I come down in the morning to get my coffee and see Michelle Graves, our, our office manager. And we have a couple students there. And Liz Abel, my boss, was in an office next door. And you'd walk in. It was a Donnie Daniels comedy hour. I mean, the stuff <laughs> you do was better than Comedy Central, HBO, any of those places. And you were just cracking us up. And then, of course, I worked with men's basketball uh, for a bit when you were still coaching. And then uh, in December of 18, you call me up and you say, hey, listen, Mike, I'm retiring. I want some pictures of some Utah teams. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of you. And then I see you in Salt Lake at the NCAAs, you know, that March of, of 19. And you're like, yeah, I'm done. And then within like a month later, I hear you coming back to you and I call you up. I say, Donnie, did you even play one round of golf? Did you hit the beach at all? What happened? I mean, this retirement thing, it didn't even happen. So, but now you're telling me you're ready for retirement. Is that what I'm hearing from you this afternoon? Well, well I know what retirement is like. Like every day, <laughs> okay. Saturday, I, I'll tell you, two weeks ago, I, the, the, day, the actual day was Monday. And I said, well, let's just do it after the weekend. Day's Friday. And the person on the other said, no, no, day's Monday. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that was bad. That was bad. So, yeah, I, yeah, I think but, we've all been there the past month. It's yeah, crazy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So you lose days, you lose hours. You just, you just want it to end. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to, again, to the final four run in just a moment, but let's, let's talk about your current team. I know you guys have been trying to stay in touch with your guys on our zoom conferencing and everything, but uh, it, it's tough. You know, just talk about how your current players are handling this coronavirus situation and shut down. Well, for one, they're, no, they're not on campus. So everybody's back home for the most part. And so, uh, and, the, and the, the amazing thing is with this Zoom app now, we can actually get all 12, 14 guys on the screen and talk to them all at one time. And they're all in different settings, which is pretty funny. Outside, right. inside, just getting out of bed, different time zones. You know, when we talk to somebody at 11, maybe 1 o'clock here, 12, 1, it's 7 p.m. in uh, Finland. So, right. yeah. And, um, you know, and, uh, yeah, so the guys are doing okay. You know, the thing is no matter where you are in the world right now, especially the United States, you know, our guys don't have true, true access to weights, to gyms, facilities, you know, baskets. I mean, they just don't have access to it. And so, uh, that's different, you know, like, Hey, what, uh, you know, our strength coach is giving these guys exercises they can do. Um, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Isometrics, a lot of, uh, uh weight lifting, you know, their weight lifting, you know, uh, right. agility drills and just stuff like that. And so it's, it's, um, you know, like even like, for, for example, go to your garage, grab onto a high beam in your garage and do your pull-ups. Right. I mean, that, you know, so yep. what, what you're finding out is there's a lot you can do if you put your mind to it. Like, what did they do 40 years ago? Well, we're, you're, you're finding out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Push-ups, sit-ups, yeah. simple things. Just, yeah. Just easy things that you can do. Um, you know, you can always run. And now you can't even, you know, guys think now, I can't find a track. Well, then you got to run your neighborhood. Right. Just what you do. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so uh, you know, the guys are still in school through, um, through uh, the internet. So they're finishing that up. But there's no classwork. And so what the guys are really finding out, there's a lot of time in the day. 
Right. There's a lot. Lots of free time, lots of idle time. A lot of, and so like, well, and then they can never say, and it's like anything else. This is why pro athletes hire trainers because it's hard for you as a, as a human being, me, to say me, it's hard for me to get up. You know, I'm going to run two miles. Oh man, not I really. <laughs> yeah. And that trainer or that workout guy, he'll get you to do it. He'll get you. Right. And that's, and that's, and it's, uh, I mean, the pro athletes, you know, the pros are no different than us now. They, they're having a hard time. They can probably pay to have somebody open up a gym, but, you know, they're not supposed to. And it's, you know, six, six feet away. It's like, you know, they're in the same world we are right now. You know, they can't get into their facilities. They can't, I mean, it's, oh, okay. And you can't go to UCLA because they're closed. Everything is closed, you know. And so, uh, and again, obviously, as you're seeing with this uh, horse, uh, this horse thing on ESPN, they all have nice outdoor, you know, uh, basketball courts. And stuff. Right. Yeah. In home so, gyms and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, so they, 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 they'll have, they'll have means and resources to go lift weights, treadmills, because they have, you know, they have resources for that. But uh, like the Utah Jazz, they gave, they are letting their players use uh, spin bikes. Every player has a spin bike, no matter where you are, spin bike. So they can keep their cardio, low. you know, and so and, and some guys swim, you know, this it, is different. But, you know, the biggest thing here now is just to be safe, you know, right. stay safe, be safe, be cautious, be considerate of others. You know, it's, it's tough right now. Yeah, it's amazing how simple things have become when you have a <laughs> pandemic to deal with and and health and safety is your first priority. Uh, talking to Donnie Daniels, who's now the director of player development for Utah basketball and and this is the first edition of the U Insider presented by Pepsi. Uh, Diane, so glad you joined us. Let's let's get to the, the main topic I wanted to get into today, which was uh, the 1998 Final Four run for Utah men's basketball. You know, one of the real casualties that people sorely missed during this coronavirus pandemic was the cancellation of March Madness. I mean, it was crazy. We had teams on the floor at the ACC tournament on a Thursday ready to play. They're pulled off the floor. We had teams in Vegas the night before playing with fans in the stands. And uh, within 24 hours, we had shut everything down. And then of course we lost March Madness. We lost the final four. So for basketball junkies like myself and and, and you as well to, to not have that, that magical run of the three weeks was, uh, was something everyone missed. I thought for this first podcast, what better place to start than the 1998 Final Four run, that's what you were a part of. So uh, let, let's head down memory lane here, Donnie. Uh, okay. you know, for you, you, you've been to the Final Fours with UCLA. You've been around the game for a long time, uh, experienced a lot of things. In terms of you know, the top things you've experienced, where would you put that 1998 Final Four run with the Utes? Uh, for me, number one, because that's the first time, I've, me personally, I've ever gone to a Final Four. Uh, Utah hadn't been there in years. What? Uh, 66? 66. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was so, the, the last time. Yeah, so they, they had a long drought. And uh, I, I would say, yeah, that would be the first one because it's it's the first one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you treat Final Four like your kids. I don't have a favorite, but if you had to say, <laughs> yeah. But and and we were talking about the other day. It was just a great team, you know. And every Final Four team, you got great players, great teams. But uh, we all got along. That that was the year when uh, we got beaten the first round of the tournament uh, by Vegas in Vegas. Yep. We, uh, I guess we were in the Mountain West then. We were, we were in the whack still. We were in the whack still. We okay. were in the whack. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So we're in the whack, and. Uh, you know, we get beat. So coach sends us home on the bus. Hey, you got to take the bus back and get <laughs> flight. So we left them the, the next morning on the bus back. Um, you know, Vegas, you know, it's not a long drive. We, lo we lose an hour going back, but whatever. You know, it was the greatest time in my coaching career. We had great guys. You know, it's a six hour drive, snow, no, no delays, no engine problems. It was boom. But, you know, <laughs> ran the flow, so we had to go 60. Then we got down to 40 and we did that. But uh, we watched this movie, uh, Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah. yeah best comedy ever. After, <laughs> that was a Britton Johnson favorite. That was a go-to for Britton <laughs> Johnson. So, uh, yeah, so we watched that on the bus. And, and our guys just had a good time. And, and, and you have to understand, too, when we're doing this, we had no idea we were going to the Final Four. We, had, I, we, we did know we were in the tournament. We knew we were in the tournament. Where, when, hot, none. Because for the next two days, the WAC tournament was still going on. 
And then so you have to wait for that to conclude. Then you have, you know, the also then you get your your announcement, you know, boom. It, it, were we a four seed? What, what seed were we? We were a two seed that year. Oh, we're okay in the top eight. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, we get the call in and stuff like that, and then we know we're going to play uh, USF the first game, and in Boise, and uh, Phil Matthews is my very dear friend. We're playing against his team, so it it was fun. It was fun getting ready for the game. Me and Phil talked during the week. Um, it was their first time in a while, boy. First time for for Coach Matthews going to the tournament at USF. I think that was his second year as a head coach. Okay. At USF. At USF. And so, uh, you know, he got his team there and stuff like that. And uh, so it was a great game. We, you know, obviously we won that game. But uh, but like I said, when, you, when, you, when you're in it, you just don't know how far you can go. Right. And, 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 and like I said, we had a good team. But it wasn't it, – we had no idea Andre was going to be a pro, Dolax. I mean, we right. thought they were good players. But, you know, you don't know. Alex Jensen on that team, borderline. Right. Yeah, so, you know, Britton Johnson. So when it's all said and done, you know, we had Hano Metala. So it's like, yeah, I guess we have a pretty good team. <laughs> you look back at the talent, you're like, yep, yeah, okay, here's okay. Britton Johnson, here's Hano Metala. Yeah, you know, yeah. both guys who were in the NBA, Hano for right. a while, Andre exploded. You had yeah. Mike Doley, I could play it for a long time. So <laughs> the talent on that team, at the time you knew it was good, you didn't know maybe – it was that good, but over the, as the years, uh, you know, played out, it became oh, pretty yeah. obvious that was a talented group. And, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, that year we won our first 18 games. Yeah, I'll back you up here, Donnie. So I, I want to correct myself. We were a three seed that year okay. in the West okay. Region, not the two. I think we were two the year before with with Keith Van Horn. But I want to go back to that. You you talk about that bus ride back from Vegas. I talked to players, and they said too that was. The best thing that could have happened to that oh. team was losing that game. Uh, you're on Vegas's home court. It's a it's a packed Thomas and Max Center. Uh, the wound up. You lose that game. You go home. You get some rest. And, and the guys had a chance for a couple of days to just kind of unwind, decompress. Yeah, that that team won its first 18 games. Uh, best start to a season in school history. They, they went 12 and two. They just ran through the whack that year. Right. And, and so. You know, you mentioned that bus ride. Let's go back to that a little bit. Yeah, I've talked to players about uh, about losing to, to UNLV in Vegas and just kind of how that maybe set up that tournament run. Uh, how important was that moment where, one, you got rest, and two, the guys it just seemed like they had a fun time. They relaxed. And they had a chance to kind of recharge before they made their tournament run in, in NCAAs. Yeah, uh, 100%. You know, the, the big thing is on the bus uh, – you know, nobody was mad that they were on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> they, they would have liked to gotten on the plane and stuff like that. But once we got, we're a half an hour into the ride and everything was great. Guys, we yeah. slept, slept. We made our first stop an hour and a half, you know, into the, the drive. Then I got the video. Rick Johnson goes, oh, man, get this, get this, coach, get this. This is going to go. <laughs> Let's move. So I get it. And this is like a, you know, gas station, eight track. B, uh, yeah. VHS. Here we go. Right. You know, so not H, like VHS. <laughs> VHS, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. We, we jimmied up something. <laughs> like we, we watched it. We watched it. <laughs> yeah, it was, but it was, it was the best drive. And, uh, you know, just everybody got involved. We put the TV up front. Uh, guys had, it, it, it was just fun. I mean, we didn't talk about, we talked about the loss, you know, for a little bit. But, you know, it's like anything else. Once the game is over, especially the next day, you know, the guys really did want to relax. You know, yeah. and, and it's not that Majerus would have been on that bus ride back home, but, you know, it was good that coach wasn't on the bus ride because the guys, you're right. They did relax. They laughed. You know, we, we'll probably, I don't even think we practiced that Friday. I don't, I don't know how, I can't remember that. I know Selection Sunday was on the Sunday, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But uh, I, I, maybe we practiced Saturday. I don't know. We, we, might, we might have. But it was, it was, but like I say, coach was, coach was hard, but it was a hard hour and 15 minutes. It wasn't right. hard two hours and 15 minutes. He right. knew what was at stake. You know, hey, the guys got to be rested. It's all about the players. Let's keep their legs fresh. But we practiced. We watched film. We practiced. I'm sure we did that. Then Sunday came and found out who we're going to play. And the biggest thing about who we're going to play is like, it's not so much the game you're going to play. We had, we had, uh, we played either our second round game was, Second round was Arkansas. Yeah, and I forgot who they beat. 
Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. It's up in Boise. And you said San Francisco, Arkansas was a close game. You won by six, but I can't remember who Arkansas beat to get to you guys. Yeah, I can't remember it, that. It, it was like 40 minutes of hell. Boom, 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 there's press, press, right. Press, press, like, Nolan oh Richardson, God. that was a good oh, team. Oh, yeah. It was a very good team. Good enough. They were a second round game. So, right. uh, so uh, we played them, and Andre has a phenomenal game. You know, they pressed us, he broke it. Uh, he made all the plays. I think he had 28. Doliak had a good game. And that was a great, that was a great win. Now, could we beat USF by 20, we beat this team by six. And so now we're getting ready for West Virginia. Right. I think now West Virginia yep. beat Cincinnati. I don't know who did West Virginia beat. Do you know? You know, you would ask me that. I can't remember who they beat to yeah, get to you guys. And yeah, this was in Anaheim. So sweet 16 in yeah. Anaheim. Yeah. You play so now- West Virginia. Uh, Doliak had 25 points that night and, and, and that was the, the game that got you to Arizona, but, uh, right. yeah. But West Virginia was a close game and what it got down to, we were favored by maybe four or whatever. It was a close game, but it got down to free throws. They were not a good foul shooting team. We were a good foul shooting team. And that was the difference. We made our foul shots down the street. It was a good game. I mean, it was a good game. That was a good team. And obviously we were fortunate enough to get past them. Yeah, in fact, Doliak had two free throws. You know, those yeah. 25 points, his biggest two points came in the final seconds to, to wrap that game up for you, and that got you to, to Arizona. I, I'm going to talk a lot about that Arizona game because okay. that's the one fans remember. But let's go back. You mentioned Andre Miller. That was his junior year, and obviously, you know, his senior year, we all knew who Andre was. But that junior year, he was still kind of finding his way and really earning the trust, I think, of Coach Majerus to, or Big Rick to say, hey, Andre, here's the keys, you know, type of thing. Oh, yeah. It's your team. At what point did, did, did Coach Majerus feel, okay, Andre, you're ready, here you go? At what, at what point did that happen? I, I think it happened like his redshirt freshman year when he started to get his Fresno State. You know what I mean? Okay. Like that, that his his redshirt is prop freshman year when he, he sat out, then he played. You know, um, like Andre had like, you know, get in shape, but he always had it. You could just yep. see it. Coach saw it, you know, and, um, you know, uh, he started to get Fresno State, and we lost that game, you know, at our place. And okay. Like Monday night, not, oh, my God. I remember that, yeah. At yeah, 9 o'clock, game over 11.30. We're in then they hit a game money shot or something like that. The oh. end. Was that, is that <laughs> the game I'm thinking of? Yeah, that's the game. And we're, yeah. in that, we're in that locker room until 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, 4 a.m. You know, watching that film. Wow. And so, um, uh, so, that, so maybe I should rephrase my question, Donnie. I mean, obviously, you know, Coach Majerus trusted Andre, but it seemed like that 97, 98 season, it went to a different level at one yeah. point. And maybe it was during the tournament run, but I felt like, okay, Andre is great. We know he's great, but it's just, it seemed like Coach Majerus at some point just developed another level of trust in Andre. Yeah, yeah because he could trust him with the ball. He was like three to one assist to turnover. He was strong with it. You, you couldn't take it from him. And, he, and, not everything hindsight is twenty twenty, but he played like a pro, right? You know, um, uh, I, I think he liked Andre's personality. Uh, he liked his confidence on the floor with the team. But uh, I think coach, I think coach had trust in him. You know, early on, you know, yeah. not, I wouldn't say I, I was just like kind of being funny with the freshman year, but like going into a sophomore year, that's key senior year. We got beat by Kentucky by thirties. And then I think Coach had a great trust in Andre, you know, building up. And he knew yeah. how good Andre could be and stuff like that. So, um, but, you know, the, the, the level is, you know, when a guy performs at such a high level, especially against Arkansas, because basically Andre, every shot he took was in pain. Every right. shot, dribble, 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 pull, 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 up, made some foul shots. And so uh, he played at another level and he gives you confidence. And, you know, like, you know, he's an eighth player. Ninth player taken in the draft his senior year. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy what he was. But, yeah, you know, it was taken, but you know, he, he was a great player for us, obviously. Yeah, no, it was it was impressive what he did during that tournament run. I mean, you've yeah. heard coaches say you've seen that guards are so big in yeah. the month of March. If you have a good bar, guard court, they can carry you a long ways. And and he was uh, dynamic during that run. I want to go back a little bit farther, and then we'll get to the kind of the last three games of March Madness. You know, Donnie, the year before, in 96-97, we had Keith Van Horn. I think a lot of people thought this is going to be the year the youths made the Final Four. They've got Keith, they have Andre, they have Doliak. 
that that team was stacked and it didn't happen. And we, of course, ran to Kentucky as we did almost every year yeah, during yeah. that stretch. And, and so to not make the final four that year, some people thought, well, there, there was our, our, our chance. And maybe outsiders didn't know what we, what you guys as coaches knew about Andre, but you know, going to that 97, 98 season, did, how did you feel about that team? Did you think, Hey, we've got another chance in the final four here. Where did you see that team ending up that season? Oh, I, I would tell you my career, I never saw a team in the final four, like okay. the 98 team, like, oh yeah, this is our, you know, it was never, I mean, our whole goal, first things first, win your conference. Yep. All we cared about was winning the conference. Then it was, let's win the conference tournament. And then the turn, you know, you, you, you get to the NCAA and then you're thinking, let's see if we can win six games, but it was always one game at a time. So it wasn't, it, it just wasn't like, you know, we had a great team, obviously, but we didn't have Wicks, Rowe, Kareem, you know, you know, we didn't have like, the, oh my God, you know, we yeah, had yeah. the uh, 91 Rebels, you know, <laughs> it, it, it was, you know, it was, it was never like that. Never like that. Yeah. And in UCLA, yeah. they expect Final Fours, but we never saw a team, oh, this team can make the Final No, it just, it just worked out that way. And then exactly yeah. the same way. So, I mean, um, with the... Although we had enough guys coming back, we knew we were going to have a good team. But, uh, you know, guys had to mature. You know, Mike had to get better. I think Alex was coming back off his mission. He was. Rick, you remember he called him the Michelin Man. Yeah. Because he was, he was a little softer on the middle when he got back from his yeah, mission. So you look in June, we're not thinking Final Four in June. I'm like, hmm. Right. You know, we're like, how are we going to get Alex <laughs> in stage? So, right. I mean, so nothing was that early. So now we have our team in in October. And, um, uh, you know, obviously we won our first 18. And then as you're doing that, you know, you don't really think about Final Four because my, se- my second year at Utah, we had a 20 game winning streak, maybe 24 game. That was the, that was, that was Rick's second year with, we got beat by UNLV in the Sweet 16. Right. But we never saw, a final, I, we never thought Final Four. It, it, it was so simple. Conference, conference tournament, let's make a run in the, in the NCAA tournament. We never yep. looked ahead. It never. It was never about that with coach. And matter of fact, okay. in Paris, it was all about you know you can't win every game until you until you win your first game. So it's like yep. every game, every game, every game. And th- and that's I think that's pretty much how we thought about. it. I mean, we didn't really think about Final Four until you get to the Elite Eight. Wow, one more game to the Elite Eight. One more. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I, you know, and so, uh, but yeah, I, and that's when you start thinking about it. You know, you're, okay. you're back to Sweet Sixteen. But now it's like, oh man, we got Arizona. Now that's a problem within itself. You know, they're, <laughs> they're the one one seed. You know, they're the best team in America, You're defending right. national champions. And so, um, so uh, you know, we get re- yeah, we get ready for that game. It was funny, like we're sitting in this hotel, and and the best thing about the Arizona game, we only had one day to prepare. You know, it wasn't a week. You know, you could right. not coach yourself. You couldn't like, yeah, we're gonna do this diabolical deal. Right. You went from a we, Thursday night to a Saturday afternoon. So yeah, it was less than 48 hours. Yeah, let's go. And we're yeah. playing the number one team in the country and the number one seed, number one seed, and the defending yep. national champions. And they're and and Arizona travels well. We travel well at Utah, but Arizona travels to Southern California. That was in the, the Anaheim Pond. So we're, we're sitting there. So it, it was a great atmosphere. And um, what was our halftime lead? Is that in there? I don't have that. Yeah, yeah I, I know I the, the final score was seventy six fifty one. Oh yeah, uh, but I mean, you guys were up oh, what, fifteen Mike, points at halftime at least. Yeah, but Mike, the best was like this in the late in that game. You know, now we're really playing well. I mean, right? It, uh, we're making all the plays. You know, and we came up with our press offense. And when you looked at the game, yes, we had an idea, and we had a. This is how we want to attack the press. At the end of the day, Al inbounded to Andre. Go. <laughs> you know, <just> <laughs> we had all we had it all out. But go. Yeah. yeah. It was just like go. And so uh, he broke that. They took it off. They put it back on, whatever. And just uh, and then uh, I'll never we're in the we're in the hotel. It's, it's Coach Jeff and Scout. And we're in the ho- downstairs getting the film room. And Coach said, Well, what about a triangle and two? He just kind of said, <laughs> I mean, like off the cuff, like Hey, what about tra- now? He's never talked about triangle two. He's always talked about putting in the zone, but he's never did that. Something, and, uh, and, and now we go like this. Hey, now, coach, now that's ten thirty at night now. On yeah, Thursdays, we're talking about putting the triangle two against the number one team in the country. And, <laughs> and now, 
And we and we all we did we took this chance. It was a it was a major chance. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna man to man Bibby and Miles son. And we and we and Eric Dickerson, there's a five, four game stretch where he had not played well in the Pac 12 tournament, uh, Pac 10 tournament, he didn't play well, or did they even have a tournament in the Pac 98? I don't think they did back then. Yeah, I don't even think yeah. they did. But you know, obviously Arizona was undefeated, I think. Well, they have maybe one, maybe they had one loss. They had, they had one conference loss, USC at USC. They had one okay. loss. And so uh, so of course they said, let's do it. Let's think about triangle too. So we get the paperwork out, we get to put your block papers up and stuff, and we start making that diagram and stuff. And the thing is, is that Dickerson had to play bad for this to work. Because you got to remember now, they, they can also bring in Jason, Jason, uh, Jason Terry. Right. Yeah. Like, right. Oh, they, they can bring in the jet. <laughs> like, oh, man, <laughs> we, we got problems. So at the end of the day, Miles Simon did not shoot well. And Dickerson did not shoot well, you know, and Miles Simon was being man though. He was being man, you know what I mean? But, you know, he, he, he did not play well and stuff. And then Andre just played lights out. If he, if he wasn't, he might've been, maybe he wasn't the first player in NCAA, but he you had to be two. No, you here's the deal, Donnie. It was the first player. Andre was the first okay. player since Magic Johnson okay. with a triple double in the NCAA. So Johnson was back in 1979 during right. their yeah. final four run, which, you know, culminated at the Hussman center, uh, which was in the special event center, I believe, but Andre against Arizona, 18 points, 14 rebounds, 13 assists. And, and you're right. I mean, Andre was, I mean, if there was a, a national coming out party for him, that was, that was the game right oh, there. He had a, he had a block shot, you know, and you see it, and then okay. So the second half starts, and I, I literally on the bench. On the bench, I go. I, I'm looking at the scores. I'm looking at this, the scoreboard. And I'm going. What? We're up twenty. I, I'm not, I know what twenty <laughs> looks like, but I'm like, yeah, right. I mean, could, yeah. like, we're playing. Oh, Andre the Jensen bucket. Oh, put back Dolag. Oh, Miss right. Jensen. Here comes. Oh, this is going on and on and on. And so I'm thinking, you don't even realize that you're playing that way. Because right. a lot of times you play that well and you're only up six. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, God damn it, we're doing all this stuff and we're only up six. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, but we, so we beat, we have them by 30 at one point. We beat them by 25. Yeah. So, 76 51 was the yeah. final score. And the amazing thing. So we go back, we go back in. Uh, this is, I can't remember how old I was, but we go back in the locker room. Coach says all this stuff, and we hoot and holler. We go in the shower, water it all, pour it all over, something like that. We're having a great time. And then, so now we're going back to the hotel, and I'm sitting on the bus thinking, man, we are going to the final four. <laughs> I mean, we're going to play for, we're going to play for a national championship. And then, and I tell you what's, what's hard too, you know, it's hard not only to win a game, it's hard to win a game to get you to the final four. I mean, and then I think back, I've been blessed to go to five of them. But this, the best thing is, there are some of the greatest coaches that's ever coached have been there. Yeah. There's Hall of Fame coaches. Yes. Have been yes. there. Yes. Whole career. Can't Whole get to career. a final four. And, and we're talking the Gene Cady. You were talking. John Chang. I mean, we're talking coach. Right. Right. I mean, great. And I'm like, wow. You know, and so, and so I, I, I'm sitting back and I, I watched all the, you know, uh, all the uh, ESPN at that time, they had highlights of old games and stuff like that, this Final Four and stuff. I think, golly, man, that, that would be pretty cool. And for the rest of my life, I'll be a part of this Final Four. They go back to 98. And now, all of a sudden, since we're in the Pac 12, and now we're in the Pac 12, we can, uh, we can um, we get replays on Pac-12 Network. I know I've watched it. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean UCLA Gonzaga. They know that I'm on that UCLA that Pac-12 Network, and then Gonzaga, yeah. and then uh, the Utes and uh, you know it's a Utes Arizona, it's a Utes Carolina, it's a Utes yep. Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them. I'm like, wow. I mean, this, yeah. so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Talking so, to Donnie Daniels, yeah, Utah Director of Player Development on our first edition of Utes Insider. Presented by Pepsi. So, Donnie, you've taken us through the, the first four games of NCAA's 98 as a team took care of San Fran, Arkansas, and Boise, then wins over West Virginia, and then the big win against Arizona 
in the Elite Eight. You know, going back to that triangle, too, the story I heard, Donnie, was, and this may have been in uh, Coach Majerus' book, is he was at dinner that Thursday night with, uh, I don't know if it was Della Harris or who it was. It was some of his old coaching buddies, right. and they basically sat down and conceived. It may have been George Carl. There were a group of guys who conceived this triangle in two, and he says, yeah, I went back. Like you said, he went back to the hotel, through to two guys and said, hey, what do you think? And it, it worked great, but it, it's crazy how – you know, something like that just comes up, you know, and it's a suggestion and it's an idea and it, to see it works so well. I mean, that, that triangle too just had Arizona befuddled. Uh, you guys obviously had a walkthrough and some practice on Friday and Saturday. At what point did you feel like the team was grasping this idea of the triangle too and could execute it? Um, you know, when you watch the game, it, like we executed, but it, it, you knew it wasn't going to be perfect because it's less than 48 hours. Yeah. And we just had simple rules. If the two guys being men come come together, we're going to switch. If uh, if our three guys that were zoning up, no matter what Arizona did, we we're going to match up to their alignment. You know, okay. it, it wasn't like if somebody went to the corner, it might go like, if you have to go out and take them, go out and take them. You know, it's not like we're going to, we had man concepts in there, but, you know, uh, the, the, the number one thing is that Bibby and not Bibby, Miles and uh, Miles Simon and uh, and Dickerson. Dickerson. They didn't, have, they didn't have good games. Right. You know, they missed shots. And then while they're missing shots, we're making shots. Right. Beautiful world. And so, yep. uh, but a- a- after the, uh, a- and the, and the triangle two took a life of its own too. Oh my God. I mean, people have played it for years. I mean, like, right. it's like Oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we did this, you know, we could yeah. write, I could have wrote a book, could have made a million dollars, wrote a book. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it, it, it did work. But the, 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 the best thing was just like at the end of it, when we went back to the hotel. We were just exhausted. Players were exhausted. You know, parents were there. They're happy, which they should have been, but the players and coaches was exhausted. And then, and then when uh, the parade was after the final four, right? After the final four, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So the team went back. I stayed that Sunday to recruit. And then I came back on Monday. But uh, the team, team were very well received, I guess, at the airport going to final oh, yeah. four. Yeah, it was crazy. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, that whole final four run, and you bring me to that week. I mean, you know, Utah's in the final four first time since 66. But at that point, you had. CNN, SI, and ESPN, and Fox Sports, you had all these national, regional sports channels cropping up, and they all came to Salt Lake. I mean, I'm you know walking down uh, the concourse and Husband Center helping things out on the media relations side, and they're all there. I mean, all the big writers have come in, and, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, we're really doing this. I mean, yeah. everyone is here to cover Utah <laughs> going to the Final Four, yeah. and it, it was a crazy week. All the tickets, uh, ticket cow scalpers came in. I'll yes, buy all the <laughs> yeah, we were we were we were, we were big news, then, boy. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that was no. They were they're out there camping out on the lawn on the, on the south side of the Husband and <laughs> payphones dying. They were coming in the, the building to use the payphone to say, "Hey, I got a guy who's got tickets. He he wants this guy. Get that." I mean, it, it was just a zoo. It was oh, absolutely it was, insane that week. It, it was. It was. Yeah, <laughs> but, but but practices were the same. I mean, there was. No, I mean, you know, Dick Vitale didn't walk into practice or anything, or you know, it, nobody. Right. It wasn't like anybody wanted to come in. I don't even think any, any national media came in for those days. So we won, got back Sunday practice, Monday, Tuesday, left Wednesday, probably. Yeah, and there were some national media types, Donnie, around. They just didn't go to practice. I mean, yeah. they were there for the the mandatory press conferences they have you do on Monday and Tuesday okay, and okay. so forth. Yeah. But they, I know they didn't go to practice. But there was stuff that uh, I took part in, uh, you know, after practice at nights when they all okay. came in. But yeah, but I think for you guys, you know, uh, Coach Majerus was very smart. He kind of kept the team in this bubble. Hey, we've got to get our work done. You know, it's it's yeah. great we're here. This is tremendous. But let's go win a couple games, and that right. was the approach. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so we had great practices, you know, the, getting ready for K- the Carolina. This, this is my first time ever playing. I've never been in a game that had Carolina in it. Yeah. And Bill Guthrie was a coach, you know, the, you know, the great, you know, the great Dean Smith retired, I think the year before. Right. That was Guthridge's first year. Yeah. 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 And so, um, so uh, our whole goal was, okay, Vince Carter can't get any dunks. <laughs> if we're going to win this game, Vince Carter can't get dunks. 
And if he gets a dunk, it can't be a rim rattler. This is Coach Majerus. It can't be one of those <laughs> rim rattler, boom, and the whole crowd just blows the, the, the roof off the uh, off the uh, the ring. It can't yeah. be so because he had dunks, but it wasn't by himself, twisting three sixty, bang. I mean, it wasn't crazy. Not the big so, momentum building yeah, dunks no and big yeah, momentum plays, no big momentum plays, and so we're up seventeen four. And that we're rolling, and then uh, obviously they come back, and then in the second half, uh, and Andre played very well that game. You know, it wasn't a big scoring game for him, but just the way he controlled, you know, uh, and, and, and you knew he was a pro, but you didn't know how good he was going to be. But in my mind, that game right there, okay, he, yep. he controlled it. It was a big dome. It was very intimidating. First time we've ever been into a dome. And oh my God, it's just cavernous and all that. And yeah. He, out and he played. No, yeah. Andre, yeah, 16 points, 14 rebounds, a ton of assists. Uh, Doliak had 16 points. You guys were up in that game 35 22 at halftime. And that was a, a Carolina team ranked number one uh, a yeah. good chunk of the year. You, you mentioned Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson. That was a loaded. Brandon loaded Stewart. Carolina I mean, team. Yeah, they, they had some very good players. They're, they're Carolina. And, yeah. And, and then the second half, they made a run and they came back. Right. You know, they okay, here they come. Here they, they come. Yeah, and we made foul shots. Drew Hansen made some big foul shots. I think, uh, and Andre made a big play down the stretch on the drive. It was, we're down, we're up four, and he makes a, a, a layup, you know, a difficult layup over people's hands. And so, obviously, we we stayed the course. We stayed, you know, we, we survived that, you know, like, Oh, uh, you know, we beat Carolina. Well, I was with you. I mean, we had the lead, but you knew the run or runs were coming. Oh yeah. And you know, starting second half. Okay. Like you said, here they come, but it just seemed like that team, the Utes never lost their composure. You never felt like can, or Carolina really had control of things. It seemed like Utah built the lead, but even when, you know, the Tar Heels made their runs, the Utes never, Really buckled, I didn't think. Yeah, and nobody at got all. Rattled. Hampton no. didn't get rattled. You know, Britton Johnson, uh, he played, uh, he, he, uh, yeah, he played that game. He didn't get rattled. You know, Hano played very calm, Doliak, and then, and, uh, and, and Andre just controlled it. You, 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 and the, one of the bigger plays he made, Andre, was a steal that he hit the ball off of Turner's leg down the stretch. It, it, like he, it, it, wasn't, it was like he hit the ball. It went off the player leg, and the referee, to their credit, boom, <laughs> you know, yeah. he ball. And that was a big play in the game. And so, uh, and obviously we had big, Al made big plays. I mean, we were, we won that game. We beat Carolina. They didn't like, oh, they, no, Utah just, no, no, we beat that game. And, that, and, and I, I missed the part where after the game, uh, Antoine James to kiss the floor and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, all that stuff. But, you know, um, I mean, that was one of the biggest wins I've ever been involved with. Yeah, I mean, I've been through some great wins, you know. Yeah. So uh, that would it, just because it's Carolina the pros, you know, it was just, you know, it, it was oh, it was great. It was great to be a part of. It. Yeah, it was tremendous. I mean, you know, we all went down. There's fans thinking, you know what? We're here at the Final <laughs> Four. If we win, yeah. great. But we're here, you know. Yeah. It's, it's Kentucky. It's North Carolina. Stanford was there. It was yeah. us, and we were there. And I remember walking into the Alamo Dome that Friday for practices. And it was like, wow, we are at the final four with these other three teams. And it's like, we win great, but we're here. And then to see the guys come out and play so well and take down again, a team in, in Carolina that was ranked number one in the semifinals. And you're thinking maybe this is destiny. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe we can do this thing on Monday. Right. You yeah. know? And so obviously we get ready for Kentucky and, you know, and now it's 20 some years later, they didn't have the, their, it, it, there was no mass burn. There was no, you know, some crazy player. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah. It, they, they, obviously, they had a good team. That was Tubby Smith's first year. And so, you know, I mean, they had Bradley and Turner. They had guys returning. You know, they had a very strong nucleus of guys. And um, so that, that that was good for us, you know. And then so we go, we go, into, we go into that game, and now we have a 10-point lead and a half. Yes. Yes. Okay. Up 10 at halftime Yeah, in the title game. Yeah, title game, up 10. Not knowing the history of what that meant or anything like that, but we're up 10. Coach Majerus says, we go in the locker room, and it's, and it's no different than any other game. And that's one thing that was great about Coach. 
he didn't treat one game bigger than the other and all that. Now inside he might have, but outwardly with us and stuff, he didn't he didn't go all crazy bonkers and stuff like that. You know, he knew we had to play a good six uh, 20 minutes. Um, and we and we did. We played a good 14, 15 minutes, you know, to go on that one run. And uh, and the coach said, you know, well, you know, our guys got tired. I should have rested and stuff like that. And, and we were telling coach, I said, coach, what are we going to do with our salary? What, a minute? Okay, maybe he right. gets three minutes if you, if you do it, you know, at a timeout. You take him out before that timeout. You know. But, you know, we're, we're hooping. You know, and you don't get tired in the final four. You do not get tired in the final four. <laughs> no, no, you're there. Yeah. yeah. And so, that, that's a great point, Donnie. You know, you mentioned Kentucky. It didn't have some of the big names on the Kentucky roster they had other years, but they had depth. I mean, they had yeah, yeah. McDonald's All-Americans coming off the bench. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. was uh, like a 9-10 guy deep team, and it seemed like that was sort of the, the formula for their success was – in that second half, they just kept bringing guys and bringing yeah, guys and, yeah. you know, and, and, and they were fresh and they just kept after it. It almost seemed like, you know, you mentioned, Hey, do we, in hindsight, do we take Dolly Do we take Miller out for a minute here too? It just almost seemed like the way Kentucky's roster was constructed, it, it just wasn't a good matchup for you guys at that point to have a team with that depth and athleticism uh, in that particular game. Yeah. And, 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 and the, and the other four I've been in, you know, other four final fours I've been in, it's, it's a situation too where when you're in the game or at, at, at that point and stuff like that, I, I, you kind of see, you know, they did not play us. That's the thing. Kentucky did not play us. They just made opportunities baskets when they had the right. Make it. You know, we miss a shot, they make a shot. They go up by four timeout. We try and then five shots and all of a sudden it's a whatever. It was, a, I know this, it was the largest lead of a halftime that of the team not winning the national championship. Yeah. I know How about that. that? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was a, that, that was a kicker, and uh, and so when, and then after that game, you know, we come back. Uh, I don't know why this thing ding. <laughs> you hear the ding and stuff? I do, I do. Yeah, okay. we're doing this via Zoom. You know, hey, it's a podcast, Donnie. This isn't ESPN where okay. you know you're out <laughs> with with Dick Vitale or some big name. We're just hanging out talking. So yeah, do your thing there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and, and then, uh, so after the game, you know, coach is exhausted. We're, we're exhausted. You know, we're disappointed. Um, you know, and uh, coach says, some, you know, he said, Hey, you know, like at that time for us, Utah, you know, we were the talk of the town, you know, mm-hmm. we had the fan base and, you know, like, you know, we moved the country, you know what I mean? Our, our, our efforts and stuff like that. Co- coach Jarris was a, the big, you know, the, Big heavy set funny man, you know what I mean? Yeah, national media and stuff. So, um, yeah, so it was, it, it was good for and, and like I say, and we although we should have been there, we'd be in the third season because that we're not top liver, we're you know, top 12 teams in the country, so, right? Yeah, so we, we uh, you know, our guys were pleased, but the one thing I, I, you never know if you're going to get back, you know what I mean? And, right. then, and at my age right now, I've been to five and I've never won one. And I played in three national championship games, right? I wouldn't mm-hmm. have for the world. Because our guys on that 98 team were, were the best of the best. I mean, they, they laid it out. They, they gave coach everything. You yeah. Know, yeah. I mean, you, you're talking about after that game. Uh, obviously, it was very disappointing, stuff like that. And you know, our guys were just, you know, it just, you know, it's just, it's just hard when you get that close and yeah. you played that well. I mean, that game... Okay, that game, and then one when we played Gonzaga, when we played Carolina again, when I was at Gonzaga, we played in the Final Four. You know, yep. very close games. I mean, it was like down to the minutes, you know, and then you just sit there and beat yourself up and stuff. But, you know, uh, we lost to a good Carolina team, you know, uh, in 98, and we lost to a good 90, uh, Carolina team in 2017. Yeah. So, yeah, they're good teams, and they, I mean, um, and then, uh, you know, we get beat by, you get beat by Kentucky. That's a, a blue blood and stuff like that, but we were like right there. Yeah. I, and I can't imagine what it is being a player. I know how it is as a coach. We didn't have to dribble. We didn't make a turnover. We didn't miss a shot. We didn't make any shots. But as a player on that floor, you know, you, you, you think totally different because you are involved. You know, we'll give you some ideas and we'll give you some kind of feedback. But at the end of the day, just get by that guy. At the end of the day, get a hand up on his shot. At the end yep. of the day, don't let Vince Carter dunk on you. <laughs> That's easier said than done now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 
So as a player, you know, uh, and this, you know, I see Doliak and Alex and I see those guys and stuff, see Andre and stuff. We haven't talked about it, but, you know, next time we get together for our barbecue, it probably won't be this summer, but whenever we get together, we have to have like a, a table of, okay, what did you think about that national championship game? Yeah. Yeah. What were your, I thoughts? remember Donnie, one of my best memories, uh, I'm on the SID staff and I'm running off the floor, uh, from the interview room to the locker room with Mike Doliak and, and Drew Hansen. And they're playing one shiny moment on the, uh, on the video board, at the arena, you know, and then so Kentucky wins it. And, and I, I remember Doliak and, and, and Drew Hansen, I think maybe Al Jensen was there. They were just talking like we were here, you know, and you know, that was after the moment, maybe later that night they were more disappointed, but it seemed like at that moment they understood what they had done how close they were and they felt pretty good about things. And they almost, it was almost like, Hey, we gave it our best shot. You know, we were here, we were in the game. We lost to Kentucky. It's a blue blood, like you mentioned, but um, those guys seem to have things in perspective the whole time. And even after the game, when you lose, after being up by 10, they seem to kind of understand, you know what, this was a heck of a ride and yeah. we really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and, like I said, and even coach was great after the game, you know, uh, he, he kind of beat himself up for maybe the substitution and stuff like that. And that's when we told coach, coach, you know what, you want to take, I mean, coach, we're, we're rolling right now. Okay. Right. Uh, right. We, we got a chance to win the national championship. And if you'd have taken Andre up, they would have went on a four or six, six old run. You, 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 you just, you know, it would have been over. Can't call timeout soon enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 can't, yeah. So, um, but you know, it, you know, as time passes and stuff, you know, those are great memories to have. I mean, this, this, you, you being around with it and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, and you're and and just being, just being there with your guys, your family. You know, the fans are are really good and respectful to the players and stuff like that. It, it, it's definitely an event, no question about it. Yeah. Well, what a what a year it was school record thirty wins, uh, runner up in the country in ninety seven ninety eight. You mentioned all the guys that went on to pro careers. Andre Miller playing, you know, fifteen some years. Uh, my Doliak playing, you know, a ten ten yeah. some years. Alex Jensen uh, playing summer league. Now he's still coaching with the Jazz. You had <laughs> Britton Johnson get a, a little bit of playing time with the Orlando Magic and Hano Mental. I mean, you know, again we said it. it you know, during that season, you knew the team was good and you knew there was talent, but to have that many guys, you know, go from that team to, to play in the NBA or, or, or be close even, uh, yeah. it was pretty impressive. You had guys like Trace Caton, who were kind of a good role player. Uh, Drew Hansen, you know, could hit shots, play defense. There were just so many pieces that came together so yeah. well with that group. You look back at it now, knowing where those guys ended up down the road in terms of pro careers and, and how they finished up in college. It's, it's amazing just how that group came together and, and what was there for you guys that season. And it seemed like in 90 and on 2018, they all came back, right? They did for that reunion. We had, they were, yeah. they were all here. Yeah. They were all there. And, and I don't came from Finland. I mean, I saw him walking around Finland. campus. Yes. <laughs> from it was Finland. amazing. Yes. yes. To be with the guys. That's yeah. how both that team was. Yep. Yeah, David Jackson came back, you know, and Coach yes. Harris was so, he was hard on him than anybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, mean, I didn't make it back because we had a game that day. We had yeah, it was a Saturday. It was a Saturday, yeah. and then I know you were playing, and or your yeah. team was playing. So, but yeah, I was yeah. I was impressed how many guys came back, yeah. and and really just seemed to enjoy it. I mean, you know, at that point, it was it was twenty years exactly that season, and to see them all come back, it, it was a lot of fun, and. And uh, Donnie, this has been fun. We live in this this ride with you at the ninety seven, ninety eight Utes oh, went yeah. to the final four. And as I said, unfortunately, with coronavirus, we lost that chance to have some some more shiny moments this March. And uh, and uh, you know, for every college basketball player, that's the dream to make that final yeah. weekend to be amongst the final four and and to see that group of Utes there in ninety seven, ninety eight. That was a lot of fun. Any any more thoughts from you before we wrap this thing up? I, I, I would say this, you know, like those guys will be remembered for a long time. Like, I, like I'm not recruiting anymore right now, but our guys have to understand those guys that are coaching, right. Or who are still, you know, they're 40 something now, you know, 40, 40, whenever, if they're in coaching right now, their parents saw them play. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I was, I was in that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and the one thing I would say this, like time waits on nobody and enjoy the moment. I would tell everybody that's listening, whatever special moment you have in life, Enjoy it to the utmost because it's just a moment. Yeah. You know, just a moment. Take as many pictures, embrace it, 
you, you can't do enough because after a while it's going to fade so quick. So uh, that's what I would say. Just, just enjoy the moment and just know that, you know, and the best thing about our guys, they played as hard as they could. They gave coach everything. His coach wouldn't yep. tolerate anything less. You know, right? I, yeah, we all know that. Anyone who was around him yeah. knows that's how it was. Yeah, it was like they gave it all. They were totally exhausted because, like, you know, he demanded it. Our kids gave him to him. You know, gave, gave him everything they had, and great things happened. Well, Donnie, uh, your thoughts are perfect for this day and age. I mean, we're all, we're working from home. We're, we're yeah. staying at home. We're social distancing and people are wringing our hands over. Well, I can't do this. I can't do that. And, and I've lost this. And, and your thoughts uh, work for basketball, sports, or just life. Appreciate what you have when you have it. I mean, yeah, yeah we're missing out on things, but you know what? We've all had some time at home with families or time to do some other things and and uh, I think the, the perspective everyone has to have, as long as this thing lasts, is make every day the best you can make it. Find a way to enjoy it because it's just a moment um, and it, it'll be gone. Yeah, and, you know? you, and, and you never know. Right. You know, I tell players all the time, you never know who's watching you and don't pass up the moment because you know, you'll never know if you can get it back. Right. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it, this really, I, I've never experienced anything like we're experiencing right now. It's it's unbelievable when I mean, we talk about <laughs> unprecedented. It's not a question of if, if it is; it's what, of what level yeah. this is. I mean, to, to have it uh, to come on us the way it did to have you know, I talked to a guy who was in the military, and he goes, you know, basic training. You knew there was an end date. You knew exactly. Okay, it's this number of weeks. We're done. This thing we really don't know. I mean, yeah. we're hoping we're back playing sports by the fall and by you know some point in, in May, June. We loosen things up, but there really isn't a set end point. I think that's been the hardest part. Is it's hard to know how long it's going to last and prepare yourself for it. And right now there are just so many unknowns. I think that's messing with people's minds as much as anything. Right. Yeah. But you know, you just, you just, your health, my health is, you know, you know how important your health is. Yeah. You know, it tells you how important family is. I mean, you just kind of do the best you can. We're all, in. yeah, we're all in it. Not, not, you right. talk, the whole world is in this one. Yeah, everyone has to do their part and yep. uh, staying at home and and uh, the testing and social distancing. It's it's also important and uh, and uh, we're hoping this podcast can kind of help people you know stay connected to their, their teams. Like we've said, it's it's so hard when you have tough times to to lose those things that help you through your daily lives. It's a distraction from work or whatever's going on. And people love sports or whether it's a the theater or sports or music, you know, all those things they used to do to kind of help them through aren't there during this stage. And, yeah, and we hope yeah. this podcast can kind of help people reconnect with the Utes and, and uh, relive some great moments. And uh, Diana, this has been fun. I tell you what, if you and I sat here and I asked you every question I could ask you, you gave me every answer and there was food involved. The, the bill for food and beverage would be off the charts. I mean, we would have a bill, you know, the realm of what Majerus would put up back in the day. Oh. It would be just two of us instead of one. Yeah. That'd be the difference. But you and I could go on forever to my point. I mean, I could sit here and ask you questions about Utah, about college basketball. So we'll have you back sometime down the road and, and we'll do some more of this. But Donnie, appreciate you dropping by and, and all the best to you and your family. I appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you. Donnie Daniels, Utah's Director of Player Development, as we look back at the running use 1998 Final Four run. We're back with more of Utes Insider presented by Pepsi after this. Stay connected by searching for Utah Athletics on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Now back to more Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. And welcome back to Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. I'm Mike Lagerschultz. Uh, boy, how much fun was that? Donnie Daniels, our uh, current director of player development for Utah basketball. He, during the 1997-98 season, was an assistant coach under Rick Majerus, and he just relived that great Final Four run uh, for the Utes. 30 wins that season, NCAA runner-up, and Utah in the Final Four for the first time since 1966 with that 98 team. And, you know, as, as we were talking, that, that triangle and two defense had just befuddled Arizona in the uh, the elite eights and and then of course just the great guys on that team i mean andre miller long pro career mike doliak uh, playing 10 plus years in the nba hano metala uh, i think played three years with the atlanta hawks before going overseas to, to play some more Britton johnson uh, had a short run alex jensen uh, played on an nba summer team i think with san antonio he's now coaching the nba i mean those those guys were all in that squad along with guys like trace kate and alex 
or Drew, Drew Hansen. I mean, that was just a tremendous, tremendous group of guys that that uh, came together and uh, gave us all a great thrill back in that 1998 season as Utah made it to the NCAA Final Four. Well, what a great start to our new Utes Insider podcast presented by Pepsi. We'll do this every week uh, for the foreseeable future. And we've got another great guest lined up for our next show, Christina Basquet, a former All-American gymnast at the U, who uh, has had quite the career since she left. She spent some time in Las Vegas and various shows and uh, more recently has been a stunt double. You may have seen her work in the Game of Thrones. She's got another new project coming up in May, expecting a baby later this month. And uh, currently she's an assistant coach at the all right, Arizona State University in gymnastics. So Christina Basquet will be with us for our next uh, edition of the Utes Insider coming up in a week. That will do it for us. Thanks to Mike Gillen and on the technical side and to our guest, Donnie Daniels. I'm Mike Lagerschild. Until next time. So long, everybody. This has been Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. To hear more episodes of this show and other Utah athletics podcasts, search for them on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube.